So here's a teaching idea which makes use of a film poster, and the film comes from 1997. Some of you will be too young to remember, possibly not even born. Um, I'm old enough to remember. Um, I remember seeing the posters everywhere and thinking, my God, what a great title for a film. So intriguing, so curiosifying. Um, I know what you did last summer. This is what we could refer to as a narrative hook. It pulls you in, makes you want to see the film. And I never got to see the film, uh, but I always wondered what these people did last summer. And not so long ago, I was talking to my sister about this film. Turns out she went to the cinema to see it. I said, oh God, tell me, what did they do last summer? And she said, can't remember, which, is a bit rubbish, is it not? It's like um, a memorable title, but a, a forgettable film. And uh, well, here's what to do in the classroom after showing students this poster. Tell them that they're going to produce a sequel. Although this film only got 5.4 out of 10 on Rotten Tomatoes, you're gonna produce a sequel. <laughs> and uh, what are you gonna call it? What's the title of the sequel film? And I guess you could say, I know what you did last autumn. I know what you did last spring. I know what you did last, what's the missing season? Can't even remember. <laughs> Winter, yeah, that's right. And uh, you could give students uh, this frame to work with. So this will require them to produce a WH clause. So I know what you had for dinner last night. I know who you are having an affair with. Um, I know where you're going on holiday next year. These are WH clauses, um, who you are having an affair with. That's a WH clause compared with the question, who are you? Who are you having an affair with? WH clause, who you are having an affair with. And these are important uh, if students are going to go on to produce more complex structures. In this case, I know who you are having an affair with, or for example, uh, an indirect question. Can you tell me who you are having an affair with? Um, not limited to those, uh, those are just examples. And get students to you know, share their ideas, one idea from everyone. Um, then you can look, little surprise, maybe it's not a surprise, maybe it's obvious because they did actually produce a sequel to this film, believe it or not. About two years later, they produced a sequel and the sequel was titled, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Ah, uh, and I remember thinking, God, I'm not gonna see the first one now. I mean, I, I might have gone to see the first one, at least rented it one day, but then I saw the second poster, I thought, no way. I'm not gonna spend money on an incomplete film. The first film obviously had a total lack of closure. What a lot of rubbish. Um, so imagine there's a third film. Uh, would you call it a third sequel? I don't know. A third film in the series, because believe it or not, they did. They produced a third film in the series, despite the fact that this film only got, I think 4.4 .4 out of 10 on Rotten Tomatoes, they did produce a third film. What would you call it? Ask your students, what's the title? Something like, yep, it's me again. I haven't forgotten what you did last summer and I'm back to pester you. Um, that would be, a. I think that's as good as the title they actually came up with, which was, I'll always know what you did last summer. Look, they couldn't even be bothered to create a new composition for the poster. Isn't that slack and sloppy? Um, but you can use this to, maybe focus or draw attention to this, the order of adverbs of this type um, before the main verb. So I still know what you did last summer. I'll always know what you did last summer. In this case, it's after the, the auxiliary will. And that's under normal circumstances, not always the case. Um, yeah, but it's all very tragic really, because I, after all these years, I, I still don't know what they did last summer. And I guess I'll never know what they did last summer unless I, I read the Wikipedia page. Who's got time for that?